Like he said, I've been working on an electric go-kart that was conversion from gas to electric with a deep racer. Hold the mic a little bit closer to me. Okay. The first thing that I did was buy a go-kart frame actually off of Craigslist, and I'd recommend buying these kind of things that could be extremely expensive from used websites because you can get them for much, much less expensive. For example, I actually bought my frame with the wheels for $275 when something like this could have easily been $800. So it's worthwhile spending a couple weeks looking and figuring out exactly what you want. After I bought my go-kart frame, I had to power it. I ended up actually buying a half-horsepower electric scooter motor, and the fact that that was my decision for now 300-pound go-kart shows how little I knew about engineering when I started this project. I was 13 at the time, and I didn't know anything about AC versus DC power, voltage, or the importance of torque. And that was the first hurdle I had to go through, teaching myself this information. And it was something I struggled with throughout the project. Something that's really important that I've learned is that you need to know the information, and you should take the time to understand all the aspects that may be involved in what you're doing, not just what you need in the moment. It'll speed up your project and allow you to do more than just the bare minimum. After I bought the, the powertrain, I had to attach it. I ended up using a 3D printer I have in my house to create shelving units and uh, cases for the project. That was my first time 3D printing. And I, was use, I used the 3D printer that my father had got a few years prior. Looking back, I can't believe I waited for two years for a reason to use a 3D printer. That was the first time I, be, I went really specific with any of my projects. And I had to teach myself all about um, understanding how to engineer and just how intricate everything gets with every single product that people make. There were a lot of problems with 3D printing since, since I was a beginner, one of which was what I like to think of as my heat problem. My 3D printer is in a basement, which means that with overnight prints, something that's very common since I, the go-kart pieces need to be so large, the temperature drops to the point where the 3D printed part lifts off the bed, causing a print fail. I ended up creating a so-called a heat chamber that's a plastic container containing a temperature sensor. And as the name implies, the temperature sensor reads the temperature and the hair dry, hair dryer will turn on if the temperature drops below a certain point so until the t a temperature is reached where the 3D print can, can continue successfully. That was the stage of the project that I actually started involving the deep racer and making it self-driving. My father was the one who suggested that I make it self-driving. And when he said that, I thought to myself, man, that sounds like a lot of work. And it was. But I would have been a lot more without the deep racer. I knew about the deep lens, so it didn't take long to track down the deep racer. And deciding not to reinvent the wheel, I, I decided that I wanted to attach the deep racer to the go-kart itself. I did this by attaching two servos to the go-kart frame that was strong enough to change the course of the go-kart. The first of which being a high torque servo that I attached to the steering column with linkage so that when the deep racer tells the servo to turn left or right, the go-kart does the same. One of the um, issues I had was finding a servo that worked and that was because I, this deep racer one's on standard PWM, and I had to teach myself all about that. For people who don't know, PWM stands for pulse width modulation, and the simple way I like to think about it is it's a sort of Morse code that some electronics use to communicate. I hooked up the servo by plugging into the standard three ports, signal, power, and, and ground that, that are used for the steering, and when I ran a sample model, for the deep racer, it actually ran. That was the stage of the project that I presented at the Bay Area 2019 Maker Fair. 
the um, the Bay Area Makers Fair was the first time I ever became a part of a community and met other people with similar interests. I met a lot of people who were also working on electric vehicles and I met a man who directed me to the electric motor company that I would later buy my newest powertrain from. The powertrain was an upgrade from a six horsepower motor and it made a huge difference. If anyone knows about horsepower, that would make sense. It was, the upgrade was so extreme that I went from having motors continuously burn out after 10 minutes of use to not even daring to push the motor beyond 10% power while riding. And as a bonus was I'm now able to go in reverse. After the Maker's Fair and after attaching the newest powertrain, I got down to actually, actually um, making the go-kart self-driving. I, as I had run a sample program, so I hadn't done any preparations to drive in a real-life environment. I found a location that would allow me to drive the go-kart, and it was ideal because there was a, a track so that there was a set path that I could train the go-kart to follow. The first thing I did to create and train the Deep Racer was to create a replica 3D model that I would use in the cloud with the Deep Racer. I did this by using satellite images to, to create a ground layer that had the, the uh, track on it so that the Deep Racer would be, learn to recognize the lines on the track. And that worked for a while, but it reached a point where it just wasn't working and the Deep Racer wasn't recognizing its where it was when it was in real life. And I believe that was because when expanded the Im when I expanded the images to the point that it was it was a one for one life scale, the um, images were too pixelated and so there was too much of a difference between real life and the virtual world. I ended up doing what's on the screen here which is having a drone photographer take pictures from above and then compiling all the images together into one big image of the track with much higher resolution. I scaled that up and created a newer world that is higher definition and the lines are crisper. The, when, when, placed in, when placed in the real life and track now, the Deep Racer is much more reactive and it's able to understand its environment better. While the training was going on, I was finally able to implement Throttle. I added Throttle by attaching a robotic foot of sorts to the Deep Racer. The robotic foot was a linear actuator that will push and pull on the foot pedal that humans use to turn the motor on. I decided not to have electricity and just get into the wiring for the motor because I wanted the deep racer and the motor to be separate so that I could also drive manually. That part of the project wasn't particularly notable, but one thing did happen, which was my discovery of voltage regulators. And those are, mis those are misleadingly simple, but are very useful. For those who don't know, a voltage regulator regulates voltage, which means that if you put along a wire, for example, what I did was 12 volts, you can decrease the voltage to 6 volts. And that means that I could hook up as many electronics as I want to a high enough voltage battery. That's how I connected to my two servos for the deep racer, the 12 volt battery, the 12 volt servo, the 12 volt servo for steering, and the 6 volt linear actuator to one 12 volt battery. And with such a when with such a device as a go kart that has a limited amount of space, it's really important to make sure that you have the least amount of items on there as possible. As of right now. I'm continuing to let the Deep Racer train in the cloud and test it in real life. The model has been trained at 80 hours, so it still has a long way to go until it is perfectly driving. If you have any questions, you can ask them now. Thank you.
So on the depressor console, the maximum steering angle is 30 degrees, right? But how? What's the steering angle on the on the physical car? Is it greater than 30? I'm actually. Um I don't know the exact angle, but that actually brings up a really good point. I've had to spend a long time calibrating the deep racer and actually going into the deep racer itself and adjusting some files where it states the maximum turning range. Thank you. Do we have any more questions? So, hello. Yeah. So, what was the average speed that you were you were able to maintain? Uh, like, was it fast or was it? So, what was your focus uh, to complete the track or to complete it quickly, like to race? We uh, haven't gone to the point where we're trying for speed. We're right now we're just trying to turn accurately. Of course, with such something so large, we don't want it to go very fast. And so, we're, we're planning in the future that we're gonna just this one file that was in the Jupyter Notebook that we're using to train the deep racer and that'll adjust the speed itself. Thank you very much. Well, we do have one more question. Uh, if, you were to, uh, if you were to do this again, what would you do differently? I mean, in the future, as I move forward, I would definitely integrate the newest deep racer with the with hopefully object de uh, detection so that something as large as a go-kart is more likely to stop and avoid hitting someone thank you very much Do we have any more questions for elizabeth all right let's give elizabeth a big round of applause thank you very much elizabeth